<laughs> Somebody should remix that Bulk Resupply theme music. Hey! Hey! Yeah, I agree. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? <laughs> there you go. Okay, we got, was it, did it say top 10? It said top 20, so oh, 10, 10 for each of us. I have oh. 15. I got 20. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I couldn't stop, man. There's so much crap I would right. never buy again. Bonus <laughs> round, guys. Bonus round. All right. So, if you're joining us uh, today, it's blind reaction. Yeah. For each other's. I don't know what it is this. Our top mm. 20. Probably. Well, what is it now? Top 35 things that we will never buy again. Uh, learned from. Oh. Well, Years or even. That means there's a two minute timer on each one. We can't go okay. over, right? All right, so many. That's fair. So, hey, uh, everybody that's watching, share the things that you would never want to buy again. Yeah, we're going to call them out. I, I want to go read. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, Dave will pull them out. We'll share them in real time. Yep. Uh, but I also want to uh, go back and read them because it's super interesting to me to oh, see yeah. the stuff that when you bought it and used it and it just didn't work out for if you. If you guys don't know, as soon as this live ends or any of our lives end, Ryan goes back to his office, pulls it up, and rewatches it over and over again. No, not over. Gotta, no. I can only do it once. You gotta watch. <laughs> you gotta watch. I watch it at two times speed just because I want to watch the comments. Yeah, I don't so. know. I really like watching the comments and stuff. So yeah, I, don't I know. do too. Uh, Share right. yours. We'll call them out. All right, so uh, that spirit, I'm gonna let you go first here. Oh boy. The, the first thing that you'd never buy again. Oh, I've got a, I'm gonna poke the bear on this one. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna come out guns a blazing. I got, I got guns a blazing too. Guns a blazing, are you ready? I will never buy again instant ocean salt. Oh. Guns that blazing. That is. I'm not sure I'm gonna go there all the way with myself, but. Okay. Uh, but that's, sure just, that's just me. I mean, I have personally tested dozens of salts, uh, ran them through, I think I've got like six to ten episodes on salt mixes and the different things of them. And now that my eyes, it's like, it's like once you know, you know and you can't unsee. And you know, now that I know the gradients and the variations and the, and the, the different salts and you know, what I personally choose for my own tanks, what I personally choose for my own mixing habits, what I personally choose for my own storage habits, what I want in you know, gunk or residue left over in my mixing barrel. I just now, I mean, I now know that there are options out there that fit me better and I just won't go instant ocean anymore. So I won't go all the way there. If I had a big fish only tank and I was willing to, you know, use a little sediment filter in the mixing container. Mm. I would, uh, I'd be willing to do because, like, that kind of like on a, you got a big okay. like six hundred gallon tank. It's yeah, so cost wise, man. yeah, cost wise, it's the smarter option. But I don't, I, I don't, I'm never going to be in those tanks for myself. I do not personally That's want true. a super large tank, either. so I don't want to use instant. Ocean. In fact, most of the people I know that end up with those super tanks either say, uh, "I would add actually would have cut wish this I, in half." Wish I would have got a forty. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, that's interesting. All right. So number two, so I don't know, chime in if you agree with any of these, by the way, or have your own ideas. People are saying shots fired. So I'm going to go, I'm going to like, uh, you fired some shots. I'm going to shoot myself. Okay. Right? I, I, <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know. Like, I think one of the greatest things you can do is uh, admit our faults, mm. right? Mm. I would never buy two UVs again. Even though ah, I just did it. Yeah, We've been talking about yeah, it for like yeah, a year. Yeah, yeah. After our investigates the other, day, the other day and really having the conversation about it, I would just get one UV. I would set it up to uh, 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 for parasites, mm -hmm. and then if I ever needed it to fight dinos or some bacterial bloom or whatever it is, I would make sure I had it on a DC pump so I could just turn it off yeah. to fight that thing. And then once I beat it, Bring turn it back, it back down. down to the fish. That yep. seems like a way more reasonable way to implement UV. So. I'm going to eat some crow here publicly because <laughs> uh, we talked about this a lot. Using two UVs. But, you know, part of the whole journey and sharing <clears throat> it legitimately is owning uh, the failures okay. of the past. I, that, that episode opened my eyes, too. We dropped that one on Wednesday. If you have an infinite budget and don't care, two is probably better. Yeah. But, like, that's not a lot of people. No, nah, so. not for a lot of people. All there right. Go. Number two. Number two for me, uh, or three in total. Well, that's going to be hard to keep up with. Um, I will never, ever, ever buy again baking soda and pickling lime off the shelf. Okay, I, I wanted to ask you that right away. I, I came up here and I saw the baking soda here and I thought immediately, I why would it? And then he's like, uh, 
what? And I stop and I'm like, no, I want to ask this real time. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you not use the baking soda? There's, well, we've, again, this is like eyes open from tests that we've done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have uh, purity tests and all of these different investigates tests. We spent $20,000 on testing this stuff. And, you know, come to find out when you mix this stuff up, there's impurities left over. And then you brought up a good point in that series of, you know, this stuff is, uh, this soda or this baking soda and, and soda ash or what have you, bicarbonate, uh, they've been, they're processed on the same things as like washing powder. So you end up with detergents. You end up with these, I mean, this is not made for, uh, it's made for cleaning. It's made for sticking in your fridge and soaking up nasty stuff. Nobody, that industry doesn't care whether or not you're dosing your fish tank with it. So that means there's looser standards. All right. I'm going to disagree. Okay. I, I don't know. Okay, so I know it's hard to remember all those things. We did those things like two years ago, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The baking soda was actually one of the ones that performed really sim <coughs> similar it did to perform USB. Really well. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's food grade, so at least it's, it has some standards, right? So the food grade has to come off of a line right. that was designed for food and like cleaned for that purpose, whatever. Mm. It was the washing soda. Yeah. The washing soda, which is a sodium carbonate, yeah. it smells like uh, flowers and stuff, <laughs> right? Because they were almost certainly producing like the dish detergent or, or, wa or washing detergent. Right, 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 right. I'd never use that again, the well, washing soda. And, this there, one and there was uh, aquarium, you know, we would call it aquarium grade, but it was made for, you know, it's made for our industry. It's labeled for our industry that performed better than, or worse than baking soda. Oh yes, there yeah. was. They're much worse, actually. Yeah. That's interesting. Now, I'm just not going to buy it because this I know one, I can though, get farmer grade. This one I would not use, no. and I use this kind of stuff. Oh, uh, early on, early I use that a lot. Yeah, right. But now, when you look at that test and you're like, what, a hundred parts per million uh, aluminum versus zero? Ooh, no thanks. Yeah, I don't care. You can tell me that it's going to settle out, hopefully, and all the other garbage that comes with that. But for uh, like an extra two dollars a month, nope. Yep. Don't, don't care. So this one was a dramatic difference between the USP and the uh, food grade. This so, one, not so much. I agree with you that, yes, you, this is, you know, it's an option. But I know, it goes back to the salt. I know there's better options out there. There's pharmaceutical grade options that we, like, that we have. I just don't, I, I don't. Okay. Need, I have the, I'm at the point in my life where I can spend a couple extra bucks and get pharmaceutical oh, grade. I'm going to come along with you. I would use this in a pinch if I had to solve yeah. a problem, yeah. but I wouldn't use it every day. Mm -hmm. So uh, now, and uh, now in the point, I would not. I mean, and I used to coming from someone used to bake it. I used to bake it. Yeah, I used yeah. to bake it. I yeah. used to pile of stuff. You know, the things of baking it too, is I used to bake it on a cookie sheet, mm -hmm. and then I couldn't help but wonder, like, man, there's got to be like residual stuff on my cookie Cookies. sheet, <laughs> and then I put it on tin foil because that's cleaner than a cookie sheet. But then I'm like, oh, this is aluminum. <laughs> and, you know, I just, and eventually, I just buy it pure. <laughs> All right. So number two for me was uh, I will never buy another tank that is taller than it is deep. Oh, that's a good. And one. I thought about my 90 gallon tank, uh, my first one. It was a it's nice like tank. 30 inches tall. No, they're 24 inches tall by like 18 inches deep. Oh. Makes super duper hard aquascapes. Yeah. It has to essentially be that wall. Yeah. You can't really do anything else with it, and that's true of almost any tank that is significantly taller than it is deep. Yep. I just wouldn't buy a tank. In vast majority of cases, as a reef or a coral tank, again, that it's way. it's like the fifty uh, fives and the seventy fives that are really skinny, but mm -hmm. like three foot, four foot long. It's the, yeah, I ran into the same issue with a fifty five like that, and it just it mm -hmm. looked it, it, it couldn't get it the way I wanted to. Yeah, so forty breeder, the forty breeder ratio, uh, one twenty, one eighty, all those sizes are kind of my sweet spot. But I just wouldn't do that. Okay, right. number three for me. Here we go. It is. I will never ever buy for my tank or reefing hobby again vinegar. Okay, now I'm dying to know this one too. <laughs> I just, uh, I mean, I've person. Okay, so I am known. My I know myself. I will if, and I don't know. I haven't. Guess I haven't tested citric acid to the extent that I did vinegar. But uh, there's a that conversation around vinegar and the type mm -hmm. of acid versus uh, citric acid and the type of acid and the wear and tear on like metals and things like this. Definitely, I have seen personally the effects of, uh, of long-term exposure to vinegar on uh, rubber seals, where it puffs them up and makes them big, and now I've got a, an O-ring that I've, is unusable. 
Uh, I, like I said, I, ha I don't know if it does the same with citric acid. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I also haven't left them as long. I'm prone to throwing stuff in citric acid or vinegar, walking away and coming back like five days later going, oh yeah, it's clean. So, so we've all seen uh, all of those uh, like magnets that have like exploded, exploded. like mm -hmm. your Vortec uh, pumps or the wet sides and all that stuff after you soaked in vinegar. Um, you know, and you see it with magnet clean, all kinds of other stuff. And part of me still, because I never had that problem with vinegar, part of me wonders whether or not there was just a leak mm. in that one, Could or be. it got dropped and it cracked and that happened. Or is this just like, because the, the part about vinegar going through the plastic and some negative ion causing this is more theory than yep. it is proof. Yeah, yeah. But for me, I'm not going to go all the way with you about this mm. one, but I'm really 90% of there. Maybe I can bring you up. I'll use citric acid all the time, but if I didn't have any citric acid around and I had to clean these pumps, I'd use a vinegar in those. All right, so the, one of the main reasons I won't go back to vinegar is I'm tired of that vinegar smell on my hands. I'm tired. Mm. I, don't, I don't want the smell of vinegar. Citric acid doesn't have that. It's like orangey smell. Like everything is. <laughs> like everything smells of vinegar. So. All right, Pungent. well, that's, a, that's an interesting one. All right. All right. All right. So again, if you got things that you would never ever do, share them with us. Also, uh, comment. Tell us we're being idiots or you agree all the way. Yeah. Uh, this is my personal belief. Yep. Yeah. Another thing I would never do, I'm, I keep throwing myself under the bus here, but <laughs> uh, that's my favorite thing to do, is I would never, ever, ever buy twin spot gobies mm. again as much as I love They're them. They're your dream fish. Yeah. Super inexpensive dream fish. I just like the way they look. I mm. like their behavior. But actually, this goes for any fish that requires a tremendous amount of effort to maintain. Like yeah. if I have to hand feed it, uh, do anything special for it instead of just broadcast feeding, I won't get it because I now know myself that I will do whatever that thing is for the first 12 to 24 months and then, and then I will stop. <laughs> or something will happen in my life that prevents me from being able to do that thing. Mm. It's also hard to pass off to the vacation people that watch your tank. and. Oh. It just doesn't fit my lifestyle to have to manually feed a fish like that or anything that requires like really special care or I know is likely going to die. I just won't buy them and yeah. put them in the tank again. I agree. I have had difficult to keep fish and quickly found out that it's not for me. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. Number four for me that I will never, ever buy again is uh, water from the store, distilled water, water from anywhere other than what I make in my own house. I just, it's so much easier. I lugged the, I lugged the five gallons and three gallons for years. I tried to keep track of when they changed out the RO filters. I used distilled water in a pinch. It, it, it's just so much easier to make myself. I bought that Kent Marine uh, like uh, RO system day one. So I will, I don't even know what that's like. <laughs> so I just have to go with you. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, number four. Aptasia X. I'll never, ever, Ooh, ever buy, use, fired. or recommend that to anybody. Shots fired. It, I, in all the cases that I've seen it used around here in myself, it's done nothing but exacerbated the problem. Uh, every time I have used it, all it did is it looked like it killed the one, but spread it. Uh, yeah. Like, oh. I just like, I killed one, I created 400. It happened uh, right here in the 160. Yeah. And here, worse. actually, what we, we did one time, is decided to one day. not learn from prior lessons and <laughs> learn a brand new worse one. What did you tell? What uh, did you tell Josh? I said we're gonna power through it, man. I want you every day. <laughs> I want you to go in there and find every last one of them and hit them every day. When another pops his head out, hit it. We're gonna beat it. We're gonna power through this thing. And all we did is created more aptasia in a tank than I've ever seen Just in my entire made, life. <laughs> made it so much worse. <laughs> yeah, I, I would never ever do that again. Man. Flip side of that is uh, Frank's F Aptasia. Ooh, that's uh, good stuff. We've actually seen that work in the 750 now, and it, I don't know. It's I don't know exactly what it is, but it, I think it's like Kalkwasser turned into some kind of stuff that forms a crust. Yeah, and special so formula. You kind of like smear it all over the thing, and it kind of like locks it in there, and then kills it and all its babies too. It's the best of both worlds that uh, that we try to that we were oh. trying before is you know. There was that kill it with caulk paste or this other type type of paste and poison it, and then you came out with your, then you have the idea of covering it with like coral gum and the hole that it's hiding to suffocate it out. 
Frank's uh, that FFTasia does all of that in one. Okay, so I can tell you we've been using it that works. Frank's FFTasia on the 750, uh, at least Josh has, and yeah. I'm watching him do whole swaths of areas, of tons of it, and it is not materializing as uh, tons of uh, no. Aptasia. No, we're actually place. getting control in that thing. All right, all right, next me. Ooh, shots fired here. Sorry, guys. Um, and I've I've had these before, and I will never ever go back to black box LEDs. Hmm. Interesting. I can't wait to hear. I uh, see all the people out there tell you, uh, I, I I that, I'm, you. that I'm dumb. <laughs> I know. No. So I've I mean so I've had black boxes. I bought them. Uh, I've bought used systems that have black boxes. I've used them, but. Again, this is something that I've learned through testing multiple, multiple lights, what we're looking for, what the goal is, what the corals need, you know, how to achieve those. And, you know, in all testing of the black boxes that I've done and personal experiences with them, I do not see uh, a place in my own personal tanks where I would consider using a black box. I would find a cheaper option that was built for the uh, for the specific purpose, maybe a little safer, but I just won't buy by black boxes. Okay, so I'm definitely not in the position where I buy one now, but would I recommend one to somebody? I don't know, mm. you know, like, I mean, really trying to get something inexpensive and, you know, be successful, maybe. It's a way in. But what I will say is, in general, for me, I would never buy a light now that has individual lenses over each LED. Oh, okay, so I, I actually hit that I one. I still one from uh, I actually hit that one I was one wondering, waiting for when that yeah. was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't use light sources now that have one single, because it creates these like, like focused beams of individual uh, spectrum. Color. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it with the naked eye, you can see it with the, with the measuring tool, our spectrometer, and it looks terrible. And they tend to have like really narrow lenses that create these laser beam of part. So I wouldn't use it, I wouldn't call it a black box per, per se, but I just personally wouldn't use a, mm. a light source that has individual lenses in most cases. Uh, there's, there's, some, there's some probably, and about, it, it'd have to be a very unique thing. Like if I'm trying to mount the lights two feet above the tank, well, Those. now I really need to get a lens that shoots it way down. Uh, Orphic kind of fits that boat. Yeah. But I'm not usually in that case. No. So unless I'm trying to shoot the, the light down two feet, I'm just not going to do it. All right, next one for me. Ooh. I mean, this one doesn't exist anymore, but I mean, this is like, I keep it throwing was, myself under the bus. It buster. was a pain. I've, uh, I read, you read it. I read it from uh, over you see, here. See it? <laughs> okay, I really liked this thing. And there's a reason for it, and I'll share it with you. But I would never buy a Omega skimmer mm. again, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And now this is a Vertex skimmer, Vertex gone kaput. But, like, I had like a love-hate thing with this, man. It was a skimmer that if you looked at it and you turned it on, man, it was foam, bubbles, air from like top to bottom. Oh, we thought that was good. Yeah, and you put it next to like every other skimmer and you're like, oh man, Look there's the three air. times as much air in here. I yeah. can't believe it. Yep. it. It's gotta be better, right? Because like, more air, more better. <laughs> that was everything that everybody was saying. You know, and uh, it wasn't until we did all our experiments till we were like, no, actually that's worse. And so my love-hate with this is like, it looks like it's gonna perform the best. Never performs consistently. And dude, it was always overflowing. Yeah. You could get it to work for a second, then too much food and boom, it'd blow up. Yeah. You never get the right thing. And always it looked like that thing we talked about, which is the boiling pot of water. No shortage of bubbles, man. But it's just a boiling pot of water that never produces any yep. foam. Yep, yep. I now know. It was because they engineered it to have way too much air. Yeah, but nobody really knew. People did, it was kind of like horsepower, like lighting. More power, yeah, more better, yep, right? That was and the, yep. no. So mm. I, I'm not gonna call, I guess I call, I'm calling out the Omega skimmer because it's the one that comes to mind. Yep. But any skimmer really that like the primary goal is as much air, air as humanly possible in the smallest form factor isn't really what I'm shooting <laughs> for anymore. I wouldn't buy it based on that ever again. Huh? All right, number six for me. Uh, I have I've got two in here, but I think I, feel, I think they both fit the bill. Personally, I will one never buy a swing arm hydrometer again, mm. and I, I made that decision a long time ago. But I also will never buy a handheld refractometer. For me, no. it's not for me. No. I won't buy it because I I'm just uh, the process of calibration, the process of cleaning, the making sure I drop things all the time. I'm, I break things a lot. Um, 
and I want, and I really like. It. I am a fan of the instant results and the digital readout. I just my go-to will be a digital refractometer. I just won't use the handhelds. So my first one was actually the little floater, right? Oh, okay. Uh, was it was it like the you kind of spin it to get it to? No, no, no. It was that big rod, oh, right? Oh, yeah, and, yeah. You know, and like you just drop it. Okay, so here was the problem. I dropped it right in the tank. And then it was like so frustrating because uh, the water's moving around. You never really throw. <laughs> I later found out what you're supposed to do is scoop, use the case for it, scoop out the water, and then float it in the that, case. That makes sense. Right? And we're like, oh, okay. Well, somebody should have told me. Uh, uh, but I hated that thing because it was such a giant pain. That's a hydrometer. Use. Hydrometer. And then the floating one, it was like. Tick, tick, bubbles, trying to get the bubbles oh, off the, the damn arm. arm. You know, yeah. like I never could trust it, so then no. Mm. And then my problem was with the uh, the uh, original, the hydrometer was that like, I'd always have like little teeny bit of residual salt from last time on there. Mm. And so I'd get different results, you know, when I'd read through it and maybe I didn't let it sit for the minute right, and right. I needed to get the temperature compensation mm. and all that stuff. So it's not that I wouldn't use that personally. Yeah. I'd recommend it to somebody, I'd still use it. Like but, the handheld refractometer? Yeah, yeah, yeah actually. Yeah. It, but if you if I had an extra hundred bucks in my pocket, I buy the digital one every time. It's, and definitely what's in my house. I just yep. Yeah, I, I want to drop a couple drops in there and hit the button and walk away. You know? <laughs> and, like, there's a level of confidence. Has a little uh, when I put the both the zero as well as the calibration fluid. Uh, I think 35. Mm -hmm. Super confidence building. They got it right. Yeah, yeah. So I, agree. I like it. All right. I number six here for me. I would never buy oh. a hang-on skimmer I gotta stop again. looking at your list because I get excited after I read okay. it before you say it. There's two reasons. Yep, that. I agree. Okay. I agree. All the cheap ones I used, garbage, mm -hmm. didn't work at yeah. all for me, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, some of them flooded my floor more than once, oh, right? Yeah. And, and they're ugly. <laughs> uh, they're, they're taking the, this thing that's supposed to be beautiful in my house and ugly. I'd rather just do a little bit more water changes on a tank size that I would normally have this thing on. Well, you wonder what the effectiveness of one of those are. In, like, if I, like I used it on my 40 breeder, and I had the, the Reef Octopus BH-1000 on there, and I'm wondering, like, now that I know a little more, how much more effective at filtration was that than me just doing 20 gallons of water change a week or two I don't weeks? Know. Somebody in the BRS team here is going to kill me because uh, actually the hang-on skimmers are like the number one selling skimmer here. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I know. So somebody's like, Ryan, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, the sales alarm's going off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've had it I've had it flood on me, too. I had a, an enemy get into a power head, sent my skimmer crazy, and that thing was hanging off the edge. And next thing I know, pfft. Okay, so this is the reason that, actually the reason that I would, the other flip side of this reason that I would never buy a hang-on skimmer is because when mm -hmm. we started doing that five-minute guide series, mm -hmm. we found the Tunes one. Oh, that inside. goes in the, in the tank, and it looks like... DC a, adjustable. DC adjustable, and it looks like a tower. Yep. Like a, it looks like an overflow tower yep. in your tank. Yep. It's not ugly. It can't flood. Yep. Solves all the problems. I don't think it works as good as some other options. But it's something. But it does its job. It's quiet. It's adjustable. And it looks clean in a tank that's supposed to look clean. That one's for me. Yep, I agree. Uh, and so I wouldn't buy a hang-on skimmer again. I hope somebody doesn't break the door down. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, uh, number seven for me, and I used to be into this. It was my favorite thing to do, but at this point in my life, I won't do it, and that's I'll never buy used tanks again. Between mm. the equipment, between the, uh, the uncertainty, between how they were kept, how they were maintained, used equipment, things like that, I just, it's not, it's not for me. And I have bought lots of used tanks before. I bought all kinds of setups before and ran them, no problem, had great success with them. It's just, at, at this point, I, I, I won't do it. So I've only had one. Mm. I bought a 110 gallon system, complete. Yeah, uh, so lights, bought, power heads, the whole nine. This was like my first attempt at a frag system. I was doing so well with the, the 90 gallon, and I'm like, oh man, I should sell frags or something, right? Yep. So I bought the system because it was really cheap. And it had everything, it had the skimmer, the whole thing, lights and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, and I'm like, Wow, this is the way to go. Except for this is as close to burning down my house as I've ever been with anything I've ever used. <laughs> we were walking out the, the front door, and as I was closing the door, I'm like, is that, 
Electrical burns? Yeah, smell? I don't know. And like, I went in, and sure enough, man, inside of the hood, the retrofit to the T5s were smoldering, Ooh. right? And it's because it's like exposed to rust, it was sitting in somebody's garage forever. Mm -hmm. And like, so, I'm not gonna say I never would buy, or I, mean, I, I don't know, I mean, it's a budgetary thing for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know, it's as close as I've ever been burned down to my house, so I'm very, very concerned about it. Mm. All right, uh, next one for me. I would never, ever, ever buy an alkalinity test kit again. The Hannah checker is the only thing I didn't. Oh, in. other than the other than the alkalinity checker. The alkalinity checker, man, like you can get it inside of. I mean, we've we've honed it down to like you know forty five seconds. We're you can get good. it, and it gets it comes with digital readout. I trust it. Yep. I trust it more than the dumb drops I'm doing. Yep. Uh, yep. It's more consistent, <laughs> at least, and you know, for reefing, uh, quick means I'll do it. Yeah. I would. I don't know why I'd ever buy an alkalinity test kit. That's pretty good. Uh, I would I, I would recommend anybody the answer is the first thing you do if you skip the skip the twenty dollar test kit, buy the fifty dollar uh, checker because you're going to do it anyway. And then the reagents just save the twenty bucks. Yeah, and the reagents are super cheap. Refills yeah. are cheap. All right, so that'd be me. All right, well, since you're on the topic of test kits, I'm going to shoot shoot some shots across the bow again. I will never buy personally API test kits. The master reef test kit thing. I just, I need at at this point. Uh, again, it comes to like where I'm at in the hobby now, and the accuracy, the consistency that I need, the less than ballpark range. Uh, I need to know more matter of factly what my uh, what my levels are, rather than a, a subtle change. And color reading in those little vials mm -hmm. difficult. And uh, the, the mess I've made with those little files is, is difficult. I'm, I'm just not good at a color matcher. So again, the Hannah Checker type deals or the ones like the Nios, uh, the Nios uh, nitrate test kit that it's shades of yellow instead of pink. These, uh, I had all of those API test kits when I first started out, but I just won't buy them again. So, I don't know. I mean, people probably think this is weird. I don't know. Yeah. Demonia I mean, 17 one? years, dude. I've never used an API, an uh, API, API test, kit? test kit. Okay. No, no, not in the beginning. I won't ever. Ah. But I did use, which is probably pretty similar is my guess, mm. like that super old, I don't even know if it exists anymore, Red Sea, like master your tank type test oh, kit. Oh, yeah. Right? It was like had everything in it. It's the first one I bought from the fish store. Yeah. I hated it. <laughs> I, I don't know. And then the first time you use a Sally for it, like, oh. This is a lot better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In fact, I think I would go as far as to say now that we did all those tests, uh, like uh, was it two years ago, and whatnot. Yeah. I guess I would say I would never not use an alkalinity checker. Yep. I would never not use the uh, uh, Aquaforest magnesium. Yep. I would never not use the uh, uh, Red Sea calcium. Red Sea calcium, uh, and the Nios, Nios nitrate. Uh, nitrate. And I think Hanna phosphate. Oh, and the Hanna checker phosphate. Those are, I, those, those are the ones I do. Those are the every time. Two. Yep. Yeah, like we, we sat down for a bunch of weeks, <laughs> week by week. <laughs> even and, Dave, and even Dave uh, who doesn't do test kits on his own, sat down or for anything, sat down and did them. And those were the ones that we all agreed on. You know, the cool part is, is like when it doesn't get brand specific. Like you can like oh, uh, run like the whole the, yeah. Red Seas for me, you no know, Sally Furts for me. Yeah, I don't know. There's actually a right best tool, tool, right job. Yeah, yeah. in there. Yeah, hmm. I don't know. All right, so in that spirit, okay. I actually, will, I mean, we're still on test kits here. I would never ever, somebody is going to strike lightning here down Oof. on me too. I would never buy a calcium checker from Hannah okay. or the nitrate one. Oh, gosh, that hurts. Yeah, the calcium one, I just, I just can't get accurate results out of it. And if you are just really, really careful Meticulous. about the dilution step, mm -hmm. man, you can do good it. for you. Yep. It's not me. And the, all the steps that it gets uh, for, you know, precipitating out the sample and sending it through the filter and everything for oh, the for nitrate, nitrate one. Yeah. 
you and I did it, and, and we never did another one I ever failed, again. I failed the first time. But, yeah. you know, also, I, there's another reason that I, I, hopefully we come out with a higher resolution or higher range nitrate test kit that might not mm. be so involved. Because, uh, you know, the way that we look at nitrates now, it's kind of at a, a really instant read, man. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, the range that that, ring, uh, that uh, reads at is too low than what I'm keeping my tank at anyway. I was really hoping that the Hannah team would have come up with something kind of similar chemistry as the Red Sea one, but uses oh, a Nios? colorometer to, no, they're actually the Red Sea ones because it's pink. Ah, it's true. easier yeah, to yeah, read yeah, yeah. the light yep. transfer. It's a three-part test. Yeah. Yep. I was hoping they could have come up with something like that and then use a colorometer to read it, but they added in all these steps that like made it really hard to it, do. It is pretty hard. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't need that level of accuracy. I'm okay with ballparking the nitrate. Mm. And for me, that's why the NIO say, hits it for me. It's yeah. easy and I get in the ballpark that matters to me. Yep. All right, so I, I, I wouldn't buy either one of those checkers again. All right, moving off of test kits for me, number nine, thing I wouldn't buy again, five gallon buckets for water changes. Mm. I'm not going to, and then a couple reasons. Well, I, I just don't need a five gallon bucket because I'm over, I am in my, in the tank that I desire that I'm going for. Now I have a 60 gallon in the office here in a little tiny tank also, but I just, uh, I don't, five gallons isn't going to do the percentage that I want. I don't want to, you know, it's so many times on my 125 gallon or even my 90 gallon have I started a siphon with my mouth, got it in the bucket, went off to do something because I have ADD and whatever, and then come back to I hear water coming out. It's happened so many times. But now I've got tools like an auto water changer or even uh, for manual water changes, that CJ Python combo. So I can, I use that in the office. Every time I do a water change, I pull two brute trash cans in, one full of fresh water, one empty. I put the CJ in the uh, in the tank, pump it into the brute trash can, flip flop them, pump the fresh water back in. I'm done. Okay, so Love I, it. I gotta tell you, I had this. This is gonna be blast for me. You guys ready? <laughs> yep. <Okay. laughs> All right, so we have the auto water changer set up on the 360 at my house, uh -huh. right? Yep. Okay. But I want to do like a 30% water change, which means I'd have to set it on max because it does like what, 30 some gallons a day? Yeah, max of 31 gallons a day. Yeah, so I'd have to set it on max for, for a 24 hour period. Yeah, for well, it splits it up. Day. But yeah. I don't know. And I'm like, man, I just want to do the water change. I just want to have it all done at once. And so I don't know if you guys have seen it, but uh, that that zero, what is it called? It's the ultra zero, ultra, ultra zero. CJ. It's ah. a really cool pump, man. It has this little black box, and then it sucks off the bottom, but it has little ridges that keeps it all the way at the bottom. Screws onto garden hose attachments like the Python. Yeah. Okay, so I did a water change last night. Uh, all right, while we were playing, uh, uh, what's it? Yoshi's Island or something? Not Yoshi's Island. <laughs> it's a, a fox. A, something tail. A funny tail or okay. whatever it is. So we were playing that game. Well, I did the water change. And I really wondered, like, man, is this easier than doing the auto water change? Mm. I don't know. So this is what it looks like. I used the python. I went and put one end into the sink. Yep. The other end, I screw on the Ultra Zero. I set it in the tank. I go play Lucky's Tail. Oh, okay. I go play Lucky's Tail for a little while. With you and your son? Yeah. And then <laughs> I, I, look around, I look over, I suck down enough water, and then I just take the Ultra Zero and I drop it in the salt bin and put the other end in the tank. I go play Lucky's Tail for a minute, I come back, water change is done. <laughs> That's so easy. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I like, love I'm that part. Hauling pump. buckets and sucking tubes and stuff, it's crazy, man. No. I don't know. I can't tell you whether, I'm really curious now if I'm just going to do that or if I'm going to use the dose yeah. and send it back and forth. I don't know. Be the, be the Fountain makes, brings up a good point and says, uh, she says, uh, so you traded five gallon buckets for 35 gallon brute trash cans? Yeah, basically, it's but I can do less. it a lot faster. More or less, yeah, more or less. I don't know. I, I just, I, I literally had this uh, thought when I was doing it. I'm like, man, can I say that out loud? Because I did. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I got it was. I, I just it was just so refreshingly easy in comparison to anything else I've done. Number nine for you. Uh, okay, number nine, ORP probe. Never buy I'd it never again. Never buy an ORP probe again. I don't even know why I bought the first one. Other than like I have run ozone before. In that case, I'd use it. Yeah. I probably won't use ozone mm. uh, in the future. I, I don't know. I always toy with it in the back of my head, but I don't know if I will. But 
I don't know, man. It's just another $60 probe to buy. Mm. And it we theoretically could tell you if you've poured in too much food and all this other stuff. Something died or yeah, what have you. Yeah, I just don't you. personally use it that way. Mm -hmm. So I got other stuff that tell me that kind of stuff and I'm watching the tank or just making sure I don't do that. Yeah. I don't know. I just... We really need I, to... I don't know. I don't, I, raise your hand if you use ORP effectively and find it super very valuable. Specific Share it with us because I'm going to come back and read it. I just don't think I'd I'd rather actually have back redundant pH probes and put them in different areas or something. Yeah, I agree. I, I've, I've had four, three or four of them before on my tank and never really... I just put them in and... You know, I, afterthought. I never even look at the, the reading. I don't even know, really. I don't, didn't even know what it means. What is, what, like, what's... Oxidation what, reduction potential. Well, I know what that means, yeah. but, like, for what purpose? Like, what am I looking at? Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. All right. I personally, it's, it's cool if it's there, you know, came with my Apex, so I'll use the first one. Mm -hmm. If it wore out, would I buy another one? No, I probably... Yeah. I don't know. So, ozone mostly, for sure, but... I don't know, man. I don't yeah. know. I know the, the, I'm telling you, I'm going to walk out of here. The marketing department is going to fire me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm like, telling you, I don't buy uh, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna All right. They're going to have a hard time with me in number 10. Uh, I will never buy again mesh filter socks. Yeah, me either. <laughs> mesh filter socks. Uh, these, I mean, we just uh, we shot a filter sock. Oh, what was it? Filter sock mistakes. You guys came out on Tuesday. You, you guys should have saw that. And uh, other than, okay, so somebody had listed in the comments after we said, you know, don't buy mesh filter socks, it's a mistake, get the felt because it's thicker, it actually grabs the particles, it holds on to them. If you're changing them every three days, you're actually doing something beneficial. But the, the mesh filter socks is such a thin layer that, you know, even the smallest of particles can break down and get through. But uh, somebody did bring up the good point of um, when you're doing, uh, when you're, when you're like, if you have algae or something, you're doing manual removal of algae, or you've like scra or scraped up some you know crap in your tank and it's floating around, to do that that water siphon through a mesh filter sock and pick up well, a bunch of those particles. Felt. But yeah, I mean, it's still there. Felt. So this felt. is the only reason I personally would use mesh is I got three holes for filter socks and I don't want to use the felt anymore because I'm just not going to change it out. Uh. And what we're learning is actually if you don't change them out. It's actually just decaying all in the filter sock mm. and stopping your protein skimmer from working correctly. So it'd be better to actually let that stuff flow through and let the skimmer get a chance at it than just let it decay in the filter sock. True. So if you're not going to change out your filter socks at all, they're actually harmful, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> so I'd actually use the felt to replace, and if you're not going to use them at all, if you're, I'd use the felt rather than nothing just because the nothing makes so much noise splashing down <laughs> through the does. holes. Yeah. And then also if like a crab or snail or whatever to go down, it'll go in there instead of crawling into my return pump. Yep. So I'd use them for that purpose, but not to remove it. Not anything, for filtration. Because they don't really remove yep. a whole lot. All right, this one's going to be weird too. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe how many things that I'm telling you don't ever buy from BRS again. No. Uh, all right, so here. I, I'm not going to say never. Well. But in most cases, I probably wouldn't buy frag plugs again. Hmm. Okay. Personally, this, I can't this, agree to that one. This is a personal thing for me. Yeah. Oh. I'd rather frag them and glue them on to some rubble that I've kept in my sump. Okay. Because then when I go to glue the coral or the uh, coral to the rock, I can put rock on rock and it doesn't look ugly. True. Like this weird yeah. stupid disc on my rock right. that I have to like look at and know is under there forever. <laughs> or figure out how to slice it off. If I can actually grow it on top of a uh, live rock and there's a little bin that sits in my sump that I can pull out from time to time. I can have a really nice clean look to the frags that I add to the tank instead of those plugs. I get that for my own my own purposes, but coming from a guy who used to grow hundreds of uh, grow and glue hundreds of frags and go sell them in the big city and give them out to the, some of the local fish stores, um, the only reason that I'm fragging is to get it out of my tank into somebody else. And uh, I, the, f 
the rubble's hard for me to glue or to do because then you have to find the balance point where the rubble is kind of, you know, I can set this thing down in a tray or somewhere where it's not going to tip over and constantly move. The frag racks, you know, with the little plug is easy to stick in that egg crate and doesn't move around. I don't know. I'm, I'm still on frag plugs. Okay, I'm going to tell you, I would pay more if you put it on a piece of rock than the stupid frag plug. Okay. All right, like, I, so the, maybe maybe somebody out there who does coral spray. Uh, you, know so. you know what they should do is take that foundation rock and chop it up into rubble so you have a smooth, flat surface. Oh, maybe. Yeah, or a peg that you can break off the bottom of something that looks like a rock. Yeah. I, I don't know. But I would pay more because... I don't want that ugly thing in my tank, and I don't want to, you know, handle the coral and slice it and yeah. try to chip off the thing because it, sometimes you mess up the coral. If I could just have it in something that looks natural on my aquascape, I pay five bucks more for the frag, <laughs> uh, for sure. I, I, just because the net effect in my tank looks better. Uh, all right, all next. right. So me, number eleven. I will never ever buy metal halides, and uh, they're kind of on their way out anyway. So. Hmm. I am still in this love affair where somewhere in my head, someday, I'm going to do a radium uh, tank with uh, the, the like uh, reef bright strips on the side because of all the tanks I've ever oh, seen. RT's tank? RT's tank with the radium bulb in there mm -hmm. supported by those uh, XHO blue strips, satinic blue strips, was the nicest look I've seen on any tank they in did. all the years. It did look really nice. It's like, in my head, I'm going to do this someday. <laughs> the bulbs will probably be gone by then. But in reality, I'm never going to deal with the heat. Yep. I'm never going to run a chiller. Mm -mm. I'm never going to deal with uh, changing out those dumb bulbs and worrying whether or not my oil, Finger, my fingers yeah. got on, they're going to explode it's over not, the tank. Not for me. Yeah, <laughs> big, giant reflectors. It's just not going to happen either. So I probably agree. All right. Number 11 for me. I'm never, ever going to get, and I don't know. Yep, no. I'm never, ever, ever going to again buy a cheap heater. My multi-thousand dollar aquarium should not be dependent on a $30 heater with a 15 cent thermostat on it. That is a ridiculous statement as go. it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> there you go. It does. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, okay, number 12. Here's another one I'll never, ever buy again. Uh, full T5 fixtures. Just T5 fixtures. I love it. I, that was my bread and butter. I don't mind, I never did mind the uh, flat look with no shimmer when I was growing amazing SPS. And then I could add a little accent LED, but at, you know, at this point with the change in the bulbs and the, you know, I, the on and off functionality without, and you can get dimmable models, but uh, there's something about the, the LED, the LEDs have gone, are coming so far now that I just don't need, a full T5 fixture, like an eight bulb or anything. I, it's a plug it in the in the wall, and you know, man, you'll never have a problem growing coral. Oh, it's coral. super good, but but looks so flat. Yeah, well, and I yeah. and I know, you know, again because of the information and the sh and the things that I test, uh, I know how to better use LEDs to get what I want. All right, I will never ever buy a refugium light that isn't tunable. Oh, yeah. So, Good. like, way, go way back now. This is like five years ago, like maybe the uh, H350. Was it the 350? 350, the white body one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Horticulture yeah. light we used for the first time on a refugium. You see it in Boom. Lots and of our clips. Hits it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, this is awesome. And then, like, you're finding struggles hitting it in different areas and whatever. And what we're finding is a lot of people are, like, mounting it three inches mm. off of their, you know, because it's, it's not a lot of room. Yeah. Back here, man, we got this much room. Or we got the power the ceiling, the sun. Actually. Yeah. And so not only did I find that you need to actually tune it to the height you're going to put it in, but then we found out, like, well, I don't got, I got zero nitrate now because I sucked it all out. <laughs> Well, then how just do you tune down the yeah. How do I stop it from working? Yeah, just tune down the intensity of it, and yep. then if it starts, if I start going up, I just tune it up again. So now it, it turned it. It's like it's an adjustable filter, just like any other yeah. other of our filters. So I'd never buy, and it, I would never set up a refugium that isn't adjustable. Yep, again. yep, I agree. Uh, number thirteen for me. Uh, I mean, this kind of goes back to your cheap heater type thing, but I will never buy heaters with built-in thermostats. 
I right, built-in temperature probes and built-in thermostats. Because I'm, I mean, there's it's hard to throw away uh, the entire setup: the digital thermostat, the heater element itself. It's I don't know. It's easier to have that separate thermostat and you know uh, titanium heaters that are reliable and replace that little guy versus throwing the whole thing. And I, I, call me crazy, but it's thirty bucks versus fifty bucks maybe to replace those yearly. And I just would rather do the uh, the latter. So when you go and, and touch one of those like Chagos, you know it weighs three times as much as the next man. Yeah. So when you when you like separate them, it gives you the ability to buy something decent, you know, something that will last, yep. you know, and then buy the controller separate, which is going to turn off a million times on and off a million times this year. Yep. And replace that piece because that's the piece that's most likely going to fail. Yeah. Right. So I like that idea. I, you're gonna laugh at this one. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna tell you that this may change. You gotta be ready for this one. Okay. But as it sits today, right now, here we go. I would never buy an LG reactor. Oh. Yeah, you know why? Oh. Okay. okay. Reactor. Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, the mm -hmm. other day, uh, Randy's at the house and he's like, "So how's your uh, Pax Bellum working out?" I'm like, I don't know. I haven't opened it. Has it hasn't opened it? Yeah, I'm just kind of waiting for it to fill, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And we opened it. It's jelly. Oh my material. God, there's so much it's stuff weird. in there, dude. It was yeah. unbelievable. I, I've seen them work. It was, there was Kato in there, but everything else, too. It's, uh, it's just something that I don't. I, I, haven't, uh, I personally, and I don't think we have like, really figured out the right dials and levers to pull and turn to get them. Well, this thriving my, off the bat, but... This was my problem. <clears throat> the reason, a couple of reasons I wouldn't use it. A, I didn't know when he answered the question because I hadn't opened it up. I got to go take eight bolts out of ah, it, you know, true. and open it up. Uh, and then when we opened it up, it was actually kind of a pain in the ass to clean. Mm -hmm. uh, and if he had asked me if my refugium was working... Yes. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, or my so, scrubber, even soon. Yeah, yeah and so... Like now I'm dealing with this thing because I didn't have a refugium built into the sump because I'm just stupid, I guess. I, I don't know. I, we're running a million miles an hour. But like I would definitely do that. It, if you can't, so be it. Then get the, the LG reactor. But if mm. you're asking refugium LG reactor right now, all the way refugium mm. camp, uh, I'm still going to run it because I have it and I don't have a refugium. I'll let you know later on. Maybe That's why I said I'm leaving some room There's here some that room maybe it'll come change. Back. But my problem actually is, is that you can't buy Catomorpha in a size that's going to fill this thing up. So no matter what, if I put a chunk of Catomorpha in there, the tube is this big, there's so much light in there, of course something else is going to fill that area. Right. Hair algae, jelly, all kinds of other stuff. So I bet you it works really, really well once you've established Catomorpha through the whole thing. But how do you do that? I mean, LG Barn will sell you if they have it. Mm -hmm. A golf ball mm. for twenty bucks. Mm. Somebody, I, I need a watermelon. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Cantaloupe. <laughs> yeah. So and like, I don't know. I just want to be able to walk up and know something's working, and that wasn't the case mm -hmm. for this. It's super cool uh, piece of equipment. It was really neat, actually. One of the cool things we we found is I looked inside, and it was just filled with garbage. You know, mm. uh, all grown around on the inside of it too. Oh, but. The sleeve yeah. that comes out, yeah. man. The whole sleeve comes out and it unwinds design. into a sheet, and you can just take a razor or uh, a credit card and clean it right off. Ah, it was great. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, that's really satisfying. <laughs> yeah, it was very slick. Uh, so it's actually, I, if you're going to get an LG reactor, that's the one. But know that uh, you're in here for some maintenance, and okay. it's hard to tell, you know, what's going on inside yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So there you go. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Let's see. Number 14 for me is I will never buy again. Um, okay, you already hinted to this one. Narrow beam angle lights or lights with individual lenses for each LED. I, I will go out of my way to make sure that my lighting uh, option includes something, it includes something that can be about eight, in, uh, eight inches off the top. 
because I, I don't need a super high mounting height for me. I, I will find a way to not get a super high mounting height and I would choose lights that spread light really well at eight inches or eight to 10 inches. I just don't, they're inherent, you know, those types of lights are inherent with like some disco ball, especially when you mount them really close to the water, uh, especially with individual lenses like we talked about earlier. I just won't do it. We're gonna talk about that. All right, I got uh, uh, number 14 for me, an AC return pump. I won't buy those anymore. For mm. me, uh, they just make too much noise. All of them make some kind of vibration. Uh, like, I just want the tank Good to for other silent. purposes, but not for yeah. a return, right? I'm also probably gonna run it through a UV or something. They have the ability to adjust the flow to a specific beep, beep, beep. need. Yep. Also, like, uh, having the, uh, the ability to like if I got the flow wrong, I want to turn it back up, you know, uh, you know, like for instance, like the pumps kind of, just, you know, between maintenance slow down. So, yep. you know, for me, you know, one of the UVs take 1300 gallons an hour. After about a month, it's down to 1100. So I could just be screwed or I could just go hit the button a couple times. Crank up the uh, flow until you're up ready the flow to clear. A little bit. So DC pump for me, <clears throat> mostly because it's quiet, mm. mostly because I'm running through UV a lot of times, uh, but, I probably don't think I buy a, an AC return pump again. Okay, I'm with you. All right, last. I only did 15. You did 20. My last one for <laughs> I me. Help it. My last one for me is um, I won't ever buy a four-stage RODI unit again. Okay. That's just uh, I for a couple of reasons. One. Um, the major it's becoming increasingly popular for municipalities to use chloramine, mm -hmm. so I need that extra carbon block. Um, I also know that I'm not going to catch the DI resin as it's exhausted in that last inch just because I'm off doing something else. So I need an extra stage of DI resin to keep the, you know, to keep that buffer for me. And then in the end, I'll probably end up with the triple DI resin just because uh, I just want the ultra purest water I can. And uh, I can do it all in like a seven stage. I just won't buy a four stage. I understand the desire, man, uh, to buy the you know, inexpensive option, being the four stage. Uh -huh. I, I get it. It's the first one I had. And, you know, if you do your homework, you know, you can find out if your city does chloramines and stuff, but the problem is they change. You know, they yeah. run into something and they just change. And they don't, they, change. they don't warn you about it. They don't say anything about it. Just, yeah, maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, so that's the reason, like, for, I don't know, probably 20 bucks more, mm -hmm. you can get the one that has the other stage in it, so it's two carbon blocks. And for a vast majority of people, you're good now. Yep. Yeah. So that's probably what I would recommend to most people is at least the five stage, and then you can get nerdy from there. <laughs> and if you own one already, you're like, oh, damn it, I got a four stage, and now they just told me. No, just add another carbon. All you gotta do is go buy another, like a empty, cartridge. empty stage. Actually, you could buy like the DI stage, <laughs> just take the DI and use it later. Yep. Uh, and then put that before your four stage, put the sediment filter in there, and then use the other two for carbon black. Yeah. So screw on. So you're not like screwed, you just add a, add add a single filter on it if you want. Yeah. All right. Another one for me I would never buy a D, an AC skimmer again. Mm, yeah. Talk about pigeonholing yourself into a non-adjustable filter. Okay, so uh, I did it like a deep clean on the tank the other day. Uh, and like uh, a lot of sludge and stuff is coming off and like the tank, the foam on the skimmer is so thick uh, <laughs> that it won't pop anymore. And I know there's yeah. like this, uh, or the people were talking about this like oil uh, trick oh, you can yeah, put on the yeah, outside. Yep, 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 I haven't yep. tried it. But it was so thick that the, the foam flows over and it doesn't pop. And then it just like comes out the holes in the top, right? <laughs> yep. Okay, I've never seen it so thick in my whole life. But I have the skimmer set on the lowest air setting that it had. It was like at a 20 and I think it goes up to 60. Yeah. Okay, and I'm like, well, I could go try that oil thing or I could adjust this thing because there's clearly more organics in here than mm -hmm. air. Yep. My air to water ratio or foam engines jacked. Mm -hmm. I could fix it by adding more air. Mm. And I did, I added more air and then boom, it created wet skimmate instead of dry, and I was still removing all of that stuff. Yeah. I was removing actually way more, yeah. and I was like, ah, tunable to the need. And so it was running really good at the low setting uh, when uh, I didn't before need- Before fish Before I was putting all the garbage, stuff. scraping off all the garbage yeah, yeah, off the rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once I needed it to work better, I could tune it. 
So to be able to tune, tune the air and that o, uh, organics to air foam engine and creating the right bubble, it actually works. So I would never, for me, I had a love-hate affair, maybe because I used too many damn uh, Obega skimmers, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, you're, you're so satisfied with the DC performance. It's also dead silent. You yeah. can just little, little wisp. Well, I mean, just like our filter socks or filter rolls, just like our refugium, just like our skimmers, these, uh, they need to be adjusted. It's not plug and play for everybody on any of these. Yeah. So you need to have that adjusted. You know, I wish that people would have, I mean, sometimes I don't think the manufacturers even know what they would have told us. <clears throat> or maybe we just weren't listening enough. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but, like, these tools, man, it's absolutely, you have more organics, you can use more air. If you have very little organics and you have more air, it doesn't produce anything. Mm. If you turn the air down, all of a sudden you start to get foam again because there's the right amount of air to, to organics and it doesn't, they don't all just prematurely pop at this yeah. high velocity air coming out. Yeah. So I don't know. I would never buy a DC skimmer again the, or an AC skimmer or the DC. Uh, I'm sold all the way. Uh, it is, I don't know if I had a really good AC skimmer, would I feel the need to replace it? Yes. If I wasn't controlling my nitrates and phosphates and the pollution in my tank. If those things were ever climbing and I was constantly battling it, then for sure it'd be like, if not the solution, a huge portion mm -hmm. of it. All right, so I got five of my own here. Rapid fire. How about, no, how about this? You pick out some out of here okay. uh, from, there's so many, man. We're gonna do some rapid fire out of there as well. Okay. Uh, you pick one out of there. All right, where we got here? Um, a lot of calls for cheap stuff that they won't use. Um, Dev, and, or Dev Adroid says, I will never buy again a non-quarantined fish. Mm. Good for you. That's a really good point. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Aaron Kumar says, I'll never use suction cup mounted frag racks again. Very smart goal there. Magnets. All right, I got another one. All right. I will never, this one, this one's, this one's touchy too. Because <laughs> okay. I bet you 80% of people watching right now have this. Yeah. And I would never get it again. I will never buy a sump with filter sock holders in it again. Mm. I don't like filter socks. They're great. I don't want to change them out. I don't want to crawl under there. I don't want to put bristle worms in my don't laundry wash anymore. Them. Yeah. I don't want to do it. A filter, and this isn't a just a, like a pitch for the filter roll. Of course, I love the, the like roller mat and fleece type filters. But if I couldn't have in that in there, I would go without. No filter socks. Yeah, because I now know, man, that when the, when I, what I was doing before was I was just leaving them in there forever. Mm -hmm. What I was doing is starving off the skimmer. And I was just creating all this unnecessary waste in the tank by letting it rot in, in there and oh, yeah. depriving the skimmer. I was hurting the filtration of the tank by putting this filter in there and not maintaining it. And I'm just gonna be honest, I don't wanna crawl underneath the tank and change those things out <laughs> every three days. So I'd rather they weren't there at all yeah. and I'll figure something else out. Yeah. And I can tell you this actually, this happened uh, at my house the other day. The uh, uh, filter roll, I took it off offline and while I took it offline, the skimmer exploded. <laughs> right, and this is, goes back to that whole conversation that we had with uh, Royal Exclusive. Is if you've got that fleece roll in there, you have to undersize the skimmer because yeah. there's so less, much less waste in there. Well, this is true of the filter sock too, and nobody's ever really presented it this way. But if you got filter socks, you should undersize your skimmer, especially if you're going to change them out frequently. Absolutely. Okay. Wow, nobody's ever really said that before, before. right? But I personally don't want those things there because I'm not going to use them. And if, if I'm not going to maintain them right, then the whole tank is going to suffer. It's better without. Okay. I won't use filter socks. Well, that's why I have some, but I don't really change them out but once a week because... Yeah, now you know. It's, not, it's I, worse. I wish I had a you're gonna go to You're going to go to those mesh ones you just said you'd never <laughs> use again. <laughs> All right, pick another one. Uh, we got five bucks from Reef Automation. Says oh, thank Ryan you. hair is getting long, sir. It's time. Here's it some money time. for a haircut. Dude, I, I, I gotta go so bad. It's like originally it was the COVID cut. Like I, I couldn't get into the store, and now I just like I'm so busy. I can't believe it. Uh, but yes, sooner or later. All right, uh, I will ever, never, ever use hard or silicone from the hardware store. Oh, well, like unless you know what G you're looking for. No. You no, could, never. Wow. 
So look, you, you go gonna there. pay for the expensive stuff that is made for aquariums? The ten dollar one. It's cheaper. Versus it's the five. More expensive than yeah, but the and I'm gonna volume. wonder forever if I just put mold inhibitor in my tank. The, yeah. Okay, so here's the problem: volume, is you go read though. all these threads about it, of yeah. which I don't think anybody really knows. It's all hearsay. About but the mold you're, inhibitor. Yeah, you're, you're looking for the non-kitchen and bath, and then blah blah blah. You're looking for this one. You're looking for that one, and whatever. And then ultimately, people will chime in and say. Yeah, they all have it. It's just that the kitchen and bath one explicitly states it because mm. it's so it can be used in that area, but they are all have it. They're like, was well, that true? Is it not true? Dude, like, I'm, mm. for whatever I'm using this thing of silicone for, getting one that, like, says aquarium on the front of it, and even Home Depot has one that says aquarium. Yep. On it. it comes in a that smaller tube. Green tube. But buying the stuff that uh, the aquarium guys use for 10 bucks. It is five dollars well spent for me, just peace of mind. See, that's why we need to ask the tank manufacturers like Glass, like Joe at Glass Cages, or you know, uh, Reef Savvy and Felix, and what they use for silicone. Because I well, bet you they they're got using an very specialized stuff. Is that? I, I know. So they're using like uh, <coughs> not silicone, that, definitely not silicone you'd use to caulk your, you know, shower. They're right, right, right. They're using a silicone that's actually mixed with an ad adhesive mm. as well. And I can't speak for all of them, but some of them I know. Yeah. So some of them I know they're using very specialized uh, uh, silicone that I mean, this is designed to hold uh, you know, a thousand pounds together for 15 years. It's not designed to keep water out from between the tiles. You know? <laughs> True. Uh, and so it's a silicone that's just, uh, mixed with an adhesive in many cases. <laughs> uh, but like the one, uh, uh, is it ASI or whatever, like oh, they're an yeah. aquarium manufacturer yeah. and they're selling their own silicone. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, if you guys can decide for yourself, it's worth the five bucks. Mm. Uh, for me, I will never do that again. Uh, you know another one, man, that I will never use again? And it's on my tank right now and I don't like it. A standard media reactor. Oh, just like a, that's all its purpose is? is for yeah. Is it, uh, raise your hand out there if you've bought a media reactor for a carbon or GFO that isn't the BRS one. Oh. That isn't okay. the BRS. So this is my problem with it. I've talked to all of them, and they just continue to make it this way. And uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know if you guys are going to chime in and say you agree or not. But yeah. all of them, and I have a problem. One is they're just big, giant areas uh, that hold like three billion years worth of carbon. Which you don't need. I want to use a cup. <laughs> you know, I want to use like a cup's worth of carbon. I don't want 16 cups. And if I put one cup in there, it tumbles. Now, the only manufacturer out there that listened was Vertex, and they created one where you could like slide this little disc down to yeah. hold it in place Emptying so it didn't that. tumble. Emptying that was yeah. so messy. Okay, but also, I got this big, huge contraption, and I got to like, take this whole this thing much of it. to the wall, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I have that right now with the, with the Royal Exclusive one. I got two towers. They're both like hold a gallon of carbon. I had to stack all of these discs of uh, foam pads space. that, of course, gets clogged with garbage. Yeah. Uh, and to be able to hold the amount of carbon I want in there, and for most reefers, they only yeah. need that little five five that inch little mini five inch thing. Yeah. yeah. And then so uh, like I mean I'm not pitching the BRS one. I guess I am. Uh, I would. You have the you the the little cartridge. You spin it off. Pull the cartridge out. This is the only Walk thing I to take the to the sink. That's the way to go. Yeah. Why has nobody created a more polished version <laughs> of the uh, BRS of that? one? You know, I, I <laughs> where why? out compete us so, with your new reactor. I got me arguably the most expensive version known to man, and I do not like it. <laughs> I want to go put the RO canister back on the tank. Yeah. Right. So, uh, or just take the little five gallon, the little, little mini one, and just plug guy. it in and hide it in the what sump somewhere. Yeah. I, I probably am <laughs> going to do that. All right. Uh, I also would never buy a UPS. Uh, the battery backup. Battery backup. Yep. I bought one of these actually for the frag systems in my basement once. Uh -huh. But I bought one of these monster ones for like server rooms. Thinking you were gonna last days. And no, it worked great, man. And when I bought it originally, it would, it would last. It would run like return pumps and everything. And then three years later, the batteries wore out, and I realized that I, I bought this thing used. I was in for like if I wanted to replace the batteries, like fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Just Ooh. Bought, never mind. That's done. Right? <laughs> uh, and Ooh. then. Uh, on top of that, I, I'd ran my power heads off of uh, UPS mm -hmm. in my living room, and I just didn't know because I never tested it. That it was only going to run like three hours, mm. you know. Because now we yep. know you tested it. Yeah, three. I to would five never hours buy max. that. And if you're like, "Hey, man, I use the UPS just fine," 
do me a favor, unplug it from the wall and time how long it works and decide whether or not you're satisfied with that time because it's probably shorter than you think. Yeah, test them. That's uh, one thing about a battery backup. Always test it before it becomes critical. Oh yeah, and then find out, like, you know, maybe it works that great right now today. Maybe you get nine hours out of it. It's probably closer to three, but two years from now, it's gonna be four and a half. Test it again. Yeah, and you're gonna have to find out because they, they wear out. Uh, okay, I got one more, then we're gonna go, uh, go to- uh, Pick out some comments. All right. Yep. Okay, I would never buy a crappy sediment filter again. <laughs> oh, okay. the, just the cheapos? I got like, I don't wanna burn anybody, so I'm not gonna say who it was. But I bought, after I bought the Kent Marine uh, system, I bought my filters from somewhere else. Okay. Right, the replacement filters, because I found out that the ones that have a fish on them cost twice as much, and they're actually worse. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, when I figured that out, I went and bought from the guys that everybody was talking about, and then, you know, they, they say they last for 20,000 gallons and they're gonna last me a year mm -hmm. or whatever. And I was getting like, you know, two and a half months out of these things. Yeah. They're clogging, I was getting barely no water out of it. I didn't know I, well, exactly what was happening, but I was getting no water. The 75 gallons a day I was supposed to get, I was getting like, you know, 15, you know, or 20, was it whatever. Was visibly getting black and brown? Well, you know, I found out, yeah, all the filters were getting dark, yeah. you know. Uh, and then I'd email them and they wouldn't tell me. They told me I need to replace all my filters. Like, well, man, well, this is 50 bucks. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, they're probably clogged. You're selling your filters, whatever. Well, I later found out it was because they were selling me this, like, one micron sediment filter that was supposedly depth, mm. but not really, and you could touch it and know it immediately. Yeah. And so what I was doing is I was clogging that first filter, and then it was, you know, reducing the pressure to the whole system, and then it wouldn't work. And then the guys that sold them to me told me to replace all of them. Oh, wow. When I really should have just been replacing the sediment filter, but even better yet, I should have just been spending two dollars more to get a real decent depth sediment filter that will capture particles all the way through its entire thickness instead of just on the edge. Mm. And then I could probably change them Last all together. Like two times as yeah, I don't have to change up this filter every two months. Yeah. So Oof. depth sediment. Filter. I would never not spend the two bucks on a decent <laughs> sediment filter and uh, and like try to catch it all the time when it's clocked. I would never do that. All right, awesome. that was like 35 things, man. You should never ever buy from BRS again, I guess. Uh, the sales <laughs> department, I guess we are now the sales de 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 prevention department. Yep. Uh, let's share some of these uh, uh, other ones that people are sharing. All right, we got a laundry list here. So the quick and quick fire, rapid fire. Omar says never buy cheap lighting. I agree. I agree. Buy the thing that you want, uh, save up. Whatever you have right now is probably good enough. Figure it out what it is that you want and save up and get that thing. Yeah. Uh, Tigbert says canister filter, but bit me one year later. Mm. Okay, I think if you maintain them enough, some of these canister filters are actually uh, getting like CJ had a canister filter that I saw over at Jason's desk, and it, it seemed really easy to turn off and maintenance and stuff. So, but uh, it's like a filter sock. You know, if you use the filter pad inside a canister filter, and we say you, you should probably change your filter socks every three days to be effective, you might be digging into that canister filter multiple times a week. I don't know why I don't ever use this canister filter. Uh, Crustacean says, a metal bladed algae scraper. Mm. Smart. I've, I've even yeah. scratched glass, I think, because it got, one of the edges of the blade got just slightly bent, and it was scratching my glass. So that somebody said that the other day, when I was, if you follow Facebook, every once in a while I pop in there and share some stuff, and I got a whole slew of different algae uh, scrapers of my house. Yeah. I had the flipper I had, uh, which the ended tunes, up leaking, the, and yeah. tunes, all that stuff. And then I was, you know, going between the tunes and the LG Free as my favorites. Mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, and then we're just kind of showing how they work. Somebody's like, yeah, add the blade on to the tunes, it'll work just as well. It won't. It'll yeah. work good, better than it was. Uh, but, like, I was like, no, man, if, if I clean the glass, like in a regular Regularly. time, the plastic blade on the tunes works just fine, and I'm happy that I don't have that metal blade in the tank. Yep. And it turns out I actually like both now, and I'm going to keep both of those things in my huh. tank uh, because the tunes one cleans the main glass really good, and I don't have to worry about uh, the like plastic or the the metal blade, you know, scraping or the scratching the glass ever. 
but right around the edges in the bottom, the tunes I can't get it in my tank because the edge of the lip of the tank yeah. is, prevents yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And so it grows to hard stuff. Well, I can get it the that hard stuff blade, with the, the metal edge. blade on the. It's got a. Sh it's got a nice hard sharp edge. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the metal blade with the with the LG free and it's easily twice as strong. Like yeah. you can't shake it off yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you yeah. want it. The tunes one I could kind of shake off if I wanted to. That LG free and then for the week where like. I got lazy <laughs> and I didn't clean it as well as I should have and it starts to get that hard gunk on there. I'm super happy that I have the LG free around because it just mows through anything. Yeah. Uh, so I actually have, like having both, but it's interesting. Never buy a, uh, you know Metal what I'll also, yeah. in relation to that, I would never personally use uh, a magnet cleaner that has the scrubby side on it mm. because the scrubby side picks up sand mm -hmm. and once that sand gets in there the sand is also what scratches yeah, the it's glass. Yeah, big sandpaper. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. so I would, I would agree with that. Okay. Uh, Detroit Hammer says never use an undergravel filter. Mm, I've okay. never done that. Uh, Mad Shep says I will never buy again a six line RAS. That was oh. mean one in here. We, we dropped one in here and bye bye twin spot gobies and if, yeah just terrorized fish. What mm. a jerk. Uh, Cynthia says, uh, also a hydrometer, so same thing there. Mm. Uh, Stephen Rollins says, a cheap wave pump he won't ever buy again. So those, uh, like, wave makers. So this is interesting, because you see, like, the Jabows and stuff mm -hmm. on, like, Amazon, where they're really mm -hmm. inexpensive. One of the things I like to look at is, like, you know, I always like to look at reviews in reverse. Like, oh, know, do the bad ones yeah, first? Yeah, like, I don't want to read good ones. Who cares? <laughs> uh, the people like, I want to hear what the bad experience is. And then if you look at it, you're like, oh, you know, three and a half stars, not so bad. Yeah. At temp four, it's usually five stars and then 30% zero. Oh, which so like one in three, three people is like unhappy yeah. with this thing. Yeah. I'm like, that's really high. Now, normally I got three and a half, you got a bunch of twos, a three, a four. Nope, it's either five or zero. <laughs> zero. And then usually when it gets too bad, they take it off and re reboot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Let's see, Four Feet of Fish says, I will never buy a tank again with a curved surface. Mm, me too. Yeah. Uh, messing Talk with your eyes, hard to clean. Hard. Yeah. Hard uh, to light too. Hard to light, yep. Mm -hmm. Big Royal says, I'll never buy used equipment from untrusted sources with peace of mind. I'll buy brand new. So mm -hmm. I kind of had that same thought. Yep, that was one you had. Uh, Skyman, I will never buy a piece of equipment without measuring the footprint under the stand, including mm. height. That sounds like uh, buying a skimmer and not understand or not checking for the the uh, measurement underneath. And a lot of times how they're not accurate. Like how, if you think like a 23 inch skimmer and I measure from the bottom of my stand to the uh, top of my to underneath of my tank and I've only got 23 and a half inches, I'm not getting that skimmer cup out. Number one most returned item here. Skimmers? No. Uh, I mean, I'm just making this up. I okay. don't know. But it gets returned a lot. All right. Uh, as a percentage, is definitely the larger sizes of uh, Pentair UV. Oh, those things are huge. Yeah, because you get them and you're like, oh, what? I was not ready for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so measure for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dylan's little hobby say, I will never buy a small auto top off container. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it should hold a week's worth of water, in my opinion. At least, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, what's the point of having an auto top off if you have to clean it, fill it up every day? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Pollock sent us a dollar ninety nine. Oh, thank you said, very much. My reef tank just crashed from using flatworm exit. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I've used it before with success, though. But I think the dosage is you have really have to pay attention. I oh, every time I medicate, and I don't know if I'm doing it right, but it's just peace of mind for me. I do like a quarter or a half a dose to just kind of see how it will uh, affect and if it works and then I don't know. It's the same thing with like ChemiClean. I only use like a quarter dose first. I usually use a works. full dose on most things but it, here's the thing about like stuff like the flatworm stop is it's believed that the flatworms are actually toxic. Mm. And so you have to you get know, them out. Run the carbon, yeah. do the water change. You don't do all the things that they say. Well then bad news. And like these are generalized things. So uh, if you have a mild like, infestation, this is probably the right thing for you. But the problem is, is my really, really bad infestation of flatworms is the reason I'm using this. Yeah. Your mild one, you're probably not even using it. Yeah. 
But now I have, you know, epic proportions of uh, uh, flatworms in the tank. All releasing. They all die now. Yeah, ooh. Bad news. That's bad news. Anything dies in that mass in your tank is bad news. So, mm. yeah, I agree. We feel for you, though, Pollock. Uh, Jeffrey, last one here. Jeffrey says, uh, I'll never buy a Jabo doser again. Had one slip the pump heads, kept increasing the dose, because he yeah, slipped out and dumped a whole bunch of stuff. Actually, like, never understood. Uh, they're, they're not the only ones that use this. I, I think there's some other ones out there. But if you pull off the pump head and it has like friction wheels. So oh, most of yeah, them, yeah, the yeah. good ones are all geared, you know? Yeah, like the friction around. wheel, you have to tighten a screw so that it holds the friction and then turns the pump head. Yeah, like, well, a lot of them have just like three little wheels that are on a little metal peg. Yeah. Right? Like uh, the bubble magus yep, ones yep, yep, yep. and stuff. And like, hey, they're inexpensive and they give you like a cool little interface and whatever. Mm, mm. But like, how can it possibly be? accurate long term because all it is is friction on a little metal rod uh, like that can slip well and then uh, I mean, apparently right here over time like you know particles of dust or particles of whatever gets in there and causing this this uh you know this material to go on those heads and it loses friction it does it loses its bite and then it starts slipping and then that's kind of yeah. what you get so i prefer in any case like the geared versions or stepper motor versions yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, nope, that's it. That's it? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, uh, there is all the things that uh, I, apparently BRS is going to go out of business had, now because you're not going to buy anything from us <laughs> again. We had 25. Uh, you guys had a whole bunch more. I think we had 35. Oh, we had 35. You guys had a whole bunch. We almost hit 50. Maybe we should retitle this top 50. Hopefully, you guys can all find the right thing now the first time uh, the people that are watching this, or at least don't buy the wrong thing again. I <laughs> uh, can't wait to read all of your comments on the things that you think uh, that uh, you would never do again. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I'll share them with the marketing team here. <laughs> uh, but, all right, we'll see you guys next week. Well, you know, this kind of fits into our... Um all the mistakes that we've made. These are mistakes. Oh. Hey, why don't you check out the mistakes playlist? Tons. Oh, tons the whole of playlist. them. The whole playlist. Right here. Check it out right here. Oh my gosh, so many mistakes. <laughs> uh, you can go check them out. <laughs>